A ghost, a dinosaur, a blast from the past. By any way that one refers to a train powered by a steam locomotive, there can only be one conclusion, that such a sight is rare indeed. In northern Texas, there is an ancient steam locomotive that, against all odds, still runs almost every day. Former Southern Pacific 460, number 2248. Let's pay her a visit and see this 103-year-old lady as she hauls her daily passenger train called the Tarantula Train through the heart of Texas. Our story begins in Grapevine, Texas, a charming old town in the shadow of the modern Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. The oldest settlement in Tarrant County, Grapevine has made an effort to preserve its historic architecture. One unique structure that has been saved is the old Cotton Belt Depot, which was built in 1901. More than just a museum showpiece, Every morning, this station is the place to be to see a steam-powered passenger train being prepared for service. Across the street from the depot, we find that former Southern Pacific 460 steam locomotive number 2248 is leaving its service area and will couple onto its train and back into the depot. The Tarantula train is one of many tourist railroads in North America and is a quite popular attraction in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Most of these people probably feel some sense of history regarding the train, but are unaware of how unique that the locomotive up front is. Let's talk to the engineer to learn a little more about her history. Behind us is locomotive 2248. It's an 1896 cook-built 10-wheeler, 460, it's originally built for the Southern Pacific Railroad. Spent most of its life out in California and was retired by the Southern Pacific in the late 1950s. It spent most of its existence from about the 1920s on in what they called fire train service up in the Sierra Nevadas in that it uh, was fitted out with uh, steam pumps and hose reels and so forth and uh, spent its summers parked on a siding up in the Sierras waiting to, uh, for any fires that might be started in any of the snow sheds or the tunnels on the Overland route. 
and they keep the engines fired up and ready to go at a moment's notice in case there was a fire up there. After the Southern Pacific got rid of running steam locomotives over the Sierras in the mid to late 1950s, the engine was put into some sort of ceremonial service where they gussied it up with a fake diamond smokestack, put all the brass work you see on it now, and was used in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area hauling some fan trips uh, uh, around to various small towns up there. The engine was sold to a private individual in Southern California in about 1960 who kept it till the mid-1970s when it was sold to uh, the Texas State Railroad over in East Texas in uh, Palestine and Rusk. They operated it till about 1990 where it was sold to the Fort Worth and Western Railroad who brought it over here and restored it and put it back in service like it is today. Well, the locomotive is 103 years old and it is the oldest regularly operated standard gauge steam locomotive in the United States. There are other steam locomotives that operational that are older, but they only operate on occasion. Usually they're kept in museums. This locomotive is out five days a week, 10 months of the year, operating just the way it was originally intended to be operated when it was built. As departure time nears, the locomotive crew displays the classic pose as they await the signal to begin another day on the road. The 2248 is an oil burner, and while engineer Earl Noob runs the train, fireman Clem Harris is busy adjusting the firing valve. train is traversing the Fort Worth and Western Railroad, which owns this section of the old Cotton Belt route. Late in the 1880s, this line has hauled all manner of freight, which is still its primary function today. It is a hilly line, 
and our train will be constantly going up and down grades with a maximum grade being about one and a half percent. Since the 2248 is an oil burner, every so often Clem has to dump sand into the firebox, which is sucked through the flues, thus scouring them of carbon buildup. One interesting aspect of our route is how it goes between rural and urban areas. One moment we will be going through new subdivisions, and the next we are rolling through farm country. Now people often wonder how the name Tarantula has anything to do with a railroad. This term refers to early railroad maps of Fort Worth that had railroad lines extending outward in all directions, much like the legs of a spider.
One of the most unique features on this railroad is that it crosses mainline railroads at grade. Here we are paralleling a train on the Burlington Northern and Santa Fe's Old Fort Worth and Denver line, which we will soon have to stop for at Tower 60. Here at Tower 60, we cross the BNSF's old Fort Worth and Denver line, the Union Pacific's old Rock Island line that was once operated by the Katy, and another BNSF line, this trackage being former Santa Fe. Even though the old tower is long gone, being removed in the mid-1980s, this interlocking plant is still known as Tower 60. Shortly after passing Tower 60, we curve off the main line and toward our destination, the Fort Worth Stockyards. We're pulling into Stockyards Station, which once housed hogs and sheep, but is now an upscale shopping and dining complex. Once our train has made its station stop, the locomotive is uncoupled and will take water and then be turned around.
After turning on the turntable, the locomotive runs around the building to couple on to the other end of the train. Stockyards were once the prime place for meatpacking and animal auctions in the region. Today, the area is the Fort Worth Stockyards National Historic District and is a mixture of education and entertainment. Historic structures include the Livestock Exchange Building, Cowtown Coliseum, and Stockyards Hotel. This is an interesting area to visit in its own right. Howdy! Welcome to Fort Worth Stockyard! While the passengers from Grapevine are enjoying the stockyards, our train makes a side trip along the western edge of downtown Fort Worth that includes scenic views of the downtown skyline and a trip through Trinity Park.
Once the train arrives at Fort Worth's 8th Avenue yard, it reverses directions and returns to the stockyards and then continues on back to Grape Farm. back at Tower 60 and get a first-hand look at this busy mainline railroad crossing with an 1896 steam locomotive running right through the middle of it.
Our train is arriving back in Grapevine. Today's run is done, but tomorrow 2248 will be heading back to Fort Worth, a living bit of the 1890s.